So you're here for the wedding? For the Gallagher affair? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see you are not on the list. I assume you're with catering. You're not with catering. Floral? No. Photography? No. Okay. You're gonna need to get off the property. It's me, Stocky! Back with the groom of Gallagher Mansion, uh, a rather saucy game about courting this handsome ghost uh, that we're gonna we're gonna wed, even though he's dead. The pounding of my heart intensifies like a symphony, reaching a crescendo, like an aria bursting from the melody. A voice triumphantly calls out to me, "My dear." Can you come to the living room? I'm on the shitter! I'm on the shitter! I have no choice but to oblige. As I step through the corridors, each creak of my footfalls is as thunderous as a waterfall. My phone vibrates one last time, a final warning before embracing its inevitable death. I arrive at the door and enter the living room, where Elias awaits. At this point, there's no hiding my stress. I'm not that good of an actor, and Elias would see right through me. Still, I do my best to compose myself and step into the living room. Elias is awaiting for me, just as he said he would. Oh, my dear, you look paler than me! I'm telling you, Elias, it's that anemia. It gets you. Yeah, I probably do. What on earth happened? Listen, sometimes, Elias, you go to the bathroom and you just shit yourself so hard you actually lose color. I I lost contact with someone very important just now. Have you ever been contacted by a spirit medium? There's something that... that, that bleh, that's something like what I've been doing, but that contact has been cut short. You've been talking with someone else? <laughs> You, oh no, Elias! Elias is like, you've been talking to other men? I have, for my own safety. When I came to this manor today, I didn't know what to expect. I thought you expected me. I don't know what to tell you, Elias! I hoped for you, Elias. But until I came here, how could I know what was true? Perhaps I'd arrived to an empty estate moments before from collapse without anyone to greet me. Just another false rumor about a haunted mansion. Or maybe you really wouldn't be as friendly and courteous as all the whispers implied. Maybe you wouldn't be the one lingering in this mansion after all. With so many possibilities. How many ghosts have you met in your lifetime, Elias? A fair question. Well, I have faint memories of catching specters out of the corner of my eye. Telling you, it's that lead-lined goddamn wallpaper! unexplained disturbances and whatnot, but I have not conferred with any ghosts like the two of us have chatted. Certainly not in life. Exactly. So you understand my mortal caution. Elias pouts. Baby, don't be like that baby baby. My friend, my medium, was the one guiding me through this manor safely. And... Did you just meet this friend today, or...? <laughs> you talking to other men besides me? Elias, calm down. I've known him for a long time. He was the one who told me about this manor in the first place. Listen, Elias, I've met zero ghosts until you, but not for the lack of trying. Both myself and Taylor, that's, uh, my friend, have spent the better part of the past three years searching for the paranormal. And that's what led me to you. I don't know if I would be here if I hadn't spent time looking for so long. Marvelous. My dear, how wonderful it is that you finally found oh! me. Oh, he's happy. Though, would you have sought the hand of any other ghosts you may have met? A guilty sigh emanates from my lips, pre permediating the air. If they were willing to court me, I wouldn't automatically say no. But I imagine, based on what I've read, that none of the ghosts I otherwise might have run into around here would be interested in such things. And as for your friend, how exactly has he served as a medium? Elias, let me show you the greatest invention. It's called an iPhone. It's a piece of shit, but it's the only one we can rely on. 
Well, this, um, earpiece is my method of communicating discreetly. I take a bit of plastic... Bleh, bit of plastic out of my ear and hold it out for Elias to observe. Whether he has any knowledge of such modern things or not, I have no clue. But sadly, it stopped working and needs to be charged. I don't think he'll be able to help here, either. So, to contact him again... Yeah. You'd have to leave? More or less. Actually, he's coming here. Now that the link has been between us has been broken, he's not going to let me out of his sight. Oh, is that so? Is Elias blushing? Perhaps a menage a toi? He's not suddenly getting jealous of Taylor, is he? Well, he's heard about the wedding, yes? Our wedding? Are you jealous of Taylor? Don't be jealous of Taylor! I've seen him, like, put M&Ms in his Coke and drink it. It's super gross. Yes. Well, I suppose a wedding without guests isn't much of a wedding. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Taylor, put your black tie on and get your dancing shoes! Everything is just about in order for the ceremony anyway. And I hope your friend realizes how safe you are with me by now. I am perfectly safe. So he can here. wait outside for a little while we finish our preparations. Absolutely. Great idea, Elias. Don't let him in. He's going to track dirt in, and I'm pretty sure he's got fleas. Shall we go ahead and place the final touches on this affair? Absolutely. We shall, dear. He offers me his arm, and I take it. I have no fucking idea what's about to happen. Can Taylor even get inside? Will he spill the beans about my facade? Will I be able to escape before I marry a ghost? Why would you want to escape? Do I want to escape? Now then, shall we? It is time to show you my precious family jewels. It don't get stop being funny. It <laughs> don't stop being funny. Elias and I make our way up the staircase as I softly grip his ethereal arm. I watch as his free hand grips the mahogany railing. The stairs creak a little too loudly. Leaning closer to Elias, my hold on him tightens. Do not fret, my dear. These stairs are safe as long as you stay by my side. Didn't plan on leaving. I gave him an uncertain smile, trying not to remember the state of the decrepit stairs when I first entered the mansion. They now look elegant, lined with soft gold-trimmed carpeting. Oh, he broke out the gold Careful trim? now. Elias places his hand atop mine as we walk down the hallway. He wears a faint, complacent smile. Is it tiring? Hmm? Making the mansion. I pause, not sure how I should phrase the question. Not all of it is, not all of it is exactly hospitable. You mean, making it look like a ghost of its former glory. <laughs> he likes puns! Oh, perfect man. He chuckles at his little pun. With a gentle pat on my hand, he sighs. <sighs> Admittedly, yes. It's quite tiring. But if it makes you comfortable, then I shall keep doing it. It also brings back many memories. Elias, baby, you say the word. Listen, we'll take the fortune, restore the house, make it into, like, an affordable B&B. It'll be great. The smile on his face drifts, drifts into wistfulness. For a moment, he almost looks sad. I regret bringing it up. My grip on his arm loosens, and I give him a smile back. I think you've done an excellent job, Elias, with everything. I appreciate your kind words, my dear. Oh! Oh, we back here. Oh, we're back at his bedroom. Just a moment, my dear. Uh-huh. He lets go of my arm, making his way to the vanity. Instead of reaching for one of the drawers, he presses his hand against the wall, causing the vanity to lower and reveal the hidden compartment! I knew this mansion had at least one secret passage! Elias sifts for the drawers inside the compartment, eventually pulling out an unassuming dark wooden box. He slowly opens it, revealing a ring, a necklace, and a pair of earrings. Ah, here we are then. My eyes light up with wonder as the jewelry sparkles, even without any light shining on it. <laughs> it's the jewelry of the Cornmeal Barons! The ring is a gold band with a large diamond at the center. A beautiful classic for a reason. Just the sheer size of the diamond alone catches the eye. Meanwhile, the necklace is a string of pearls with a ruby amulet on it, and so very dazzling to gaze upon. 
is like looking at the very definition of opulence. And lastly, the ear earrings are a pair of are a drop pair with a Victorian love knot at the base, with an opal centerpiece and a yellow tinted green sapphire at the bottom. None of those words are correct. <laughs> Do not hesitate, dear. Choose whichever your heart desires. Ugh. They're all so gorgeous I possibly can't choose. Nevertheless, I reach out, gravitating towards the... Honestly, I've always been partial to neck pieces. I have rings, but I don't often wear them because, like, they get in the way. Earrings, my ears aren't currently pierced, so necklace. The necklace is heavy in my hands as I gently pick it up. Boy, bet I could pay off all my student loans and then some of this thing. I study closely. It almost looks familiar. Do you like it? Love it. I do. I think I've, I've seen this before. Maybe from an old picture? Elias tilts his head. It was one of my mother's favorite pieces in this collection. It's also the most expensive. It's the Cornmeal Baron Ruby. As he says this, it suddenly becomes even more heavy in my hands. Here, allow me. Elias takes the necklace and moves behind me. Could you tell me more about yourself, Elias? I'm curious to know as much as I can about my groom. Of course. Oh! His hands are cold against my skin as he slides the jewelry around my neck. He clasps it shut, hands lingering for a moment on my skin. He gives a tired sigh before speaking, a hint of melancholy lingering on his lips. I must confess that I was born quite sickly, and my birth came with so many complications that it nearly killed my mother. Even after that ordeal, there was nothing the doctors could do to help my weak constitution. I'm suspecting the opium did not help. I suppose that's why my father and siblings treated me the way they did. I was seen as a nuisance, a problem. I don't entirely blame them. Honestly, fuck them. Fuck them. Now you're the cornmeal baron. I'm sorry. It's far away and in the past now, so enough about that. Don't be sad, king. Elias moves back around to look at me, a cold, ghostly hand trailing along my cheek. The sadness from his voice has all but disappeared. Marvelous. The necklace fits you perfectly. I angle my head up to get a clear view of it in the mirror. It certainly is gorgeous, but I know that I can get more information out of Elias if I play my cards right. I'm certain this necklace must bestow some infinite beauty upon its wearer. Surely you've seen others don it before. As I mentioned, this was my mother's favorite piece. It grazed her neck quite frequently. And what of your previous bride-to-be? Did she not wear this as well? My... <laughs> my previous bride... No! No! Don't, don't reawaken his PTSD! No! That's like one thing you don't ask a ghost. You don't ask about money, you don't ask about the future, and you don't ask about how they got murdered! The smile slips from his lips and his eyes go hazy. I brace myself for another vision. I feel bad. I know it's, um, it's unpleasant for Elias as much... Ugh. I know it's unpleasant for Elias as much as it is for me, but he's a key witness to the mystery of this manor. His whole life and death, as a matter of fact. The silence stretches on for what feels like forever. Elias' face is completely blank, devoid of any emotion. God damn game made my man dissociate! Elias, dearest, I mean no offense. Elias grips my shoulders, his fingers phasing through my skin, causing a shiver. Her name was Violet, Violet Dupont, the sister of our groundskeeper. We never wed because she betrayed me the day before our wedding. That bitch! I suppose she and Gerard were desperate. I should have been on my guard when they continued to ask me about the location of the family jewels day after day. You should have just pointed at your crotch and that would just would have absolutely deterred them. Like, here it is. Ta-da! Anyway, back up. I'm the cornmeal king. I thought the necklace, the grandest piece in the collection, would have been enough to hold her interest. I had promised to share the rest of them with her after our consummation. 
She didn't even get that far. But before I could even cry out for help, Gerard held me down while Violet... No, not your beautiful head! Not your beautiful neck! I put my hand over Elias's in an attempt to show him that I don't need to hear anything else. Forgive me, Elias. We don't need to speak of her any more. She's a fugly, fugly slut. <sighs> I... Elias's grip on my shoulder eases and he gives me a sad smile. No, you needn't apologize whatsoever. There's no need for me to reminisce, and you shouldn't have to compare yourself to her. Damn straight, I'm hotter and better. Well, yeah, I don't want to be compared to your murderer. At least, that's what I'd like to say. And I want to stop, but I need to know the truth straight from the horse's mouth. Tell me about the things that brought you joy in your life. You had a fine eye for beauty, Elias. I'm sure there were other items that you held precious and dear. You've seen the greenhouse already, so you can imagine its splendor in full bloom. I quite liked reading on the bench there when my energy permitted. It was quite difficult to visit in a consistent manner, however, so I often had flowers brought up so that I could enjoy the fragrant floral bouquets in the comfort of my room. Why is this man so good? Elias leaves my side momentarily to grab an ornate box from the vanity. Aside from the flowers, there was also a family heirloom that belonged to my grandmother. It was an antique silver mirror, and a very charming one at that. At least... Oh, I lean forward as he opens the box and I peer into its contents. <sighs> that was... before it shattered. I bet it was Violet, that fucking harlot. It's the same shards of glass I found while investigating his room before. I liked it quite a lot, and ended up taking it out of the attic in my early childhood. I used to look into it and imagine myself as some sort of fair prince. You are, though, King! It was innocent daydreaming. But alas, my six older siblings would often mock my love of the mirror. And with such a weak constitution and gentle demeanor, there was little I could do. When six people who aren't very fond of you get physical, well, you can imagine what might happen. The mirror was shattered, and I was the one blamed. I'm gonna throw hands. God damn. He gently closes the box and pauses. Grandmother didn't seem to mind that it broke, but I cried for days. Maybe it was sentimentality, guilt, or fear. But whatever the case, I simply could not let it go. I forbade any of the maids or butlers to toss out the shards. The mirror was meant to be a wedding gift, and I was determined to have it fixed one day. It seems like that day never came. Yes. It was one of my greatest regrets when I died, silly as it sounds. Elias, babe, listen. We have YouTube tutorials. I'm going to fix it for you. This is my wedding gift to you. The world needs more men like you, Elias. I don't think you're silly for having emotions. Thank you for understanding, my dear. The melancholy atmosphere in the room fades as he smiles warmly at me. I am quite eager for our union. I think it'll be something glorious. I've always wanted a grand wedding, and to think I'll be marrying someone as lovely as you. Men, take notes! Be an Elias! Be an Elias! Well, you are too kind, Elias. Come, follow me outside. I have much to show you. Alright, show me the outside! We exit his bedroom together and go downstairs one last time, my new accessory adding weight to my every step. Soon we shall be wed, my darling, and we'll have all of eternity together. Are you excited? I'm pumped. Elias sure seems to be. I... I don't know how to answer that, whether I should be sincere and tell him the truth or continue the charade. I've spent the whole night here. But I have more questions than I have answers. So many loose ends and no way to tie them. And yet I'm about to tie a knot with a man I barely know while I have no idea if the other one will reach me in time. I'm so screwed. My love, what's on your mind? Nothing. I'm just thinking about... I don't know, the fact dolphins do drugs? Nothing. I mean, I... Ha. 
I really am a bad actor in the end. With everything that has happened, is about to happen, I must be feeling the entire human range of emotion right now, my beloved. Nervous, excited, and so, so full of dread. We return to the foyer, where this whole night began. Elias glides along the floor while I do my best to keep up with him, trying not to arouse suspicion. He places his hands on the door behind the steps and then turns to me. Are you ready, my love? I have worked tirelessly to prepare the old ballroom for a ceremony, and while we may not have any guests, I do hope that you will be pleased. My voice is hoarse, so the words get lost in my throat. All I can do is smile and nod. Excellent. Then without further ado... The doors of the ballroom open wide and Elias bids me through. I walk down a tattered red carpet for a dim cavernous room towards the center where extravagant dishes, aged bottles of wine, crystal glasses, silver cutlery, and finally our bouquet awaits us. <sighs> oh, damn. No one is watching yet with each step I hear take. I hear the ghost <sighs> I hear the echoes of whispers, murmurs, cheers, and sobs whenever my foot lifts from the floor. Are these? Memories of previous weddings Eli Elias has attended, now cre recreated for his own? I wonder who will officiate. Elias must have some memory of a minister ready as well. I turn my head back and peer at the door, waiting for my groom. And here he is! As he floats in, the noise grows more raucous, and the lights bloom into a pale blue glow. My gaze is fixed on Elias. An eternity passes in a single second as he reaches the altar, beaming with endless pride. It's time. The crowd hushes down to a murmur before co Colos before everyone shuts up. Welcome all. <laughs> Damn. Family and friends, thank you all for coming today to partake in this joyous occasion. You sovereign. Today we are gathered together. To unite Elias Gallagher with his beloved. Damn straight. I still can't take my eyes off my groom. Long has he suffered, and now long shall he be overflowing with joy. Hallelujah! Let the memories of betrayal, of murder, of waiting be washed away like leaves in a flood. Love has triumphed. Wonderful. Oh god, if this is what Elias is thinking. Do you, Elias Gallagher, take this person to be your lawfully wedded spouse? To live together in matrimony? To love them, comfort them, honor and keep them? In sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward, now and for all time? I do. Uh do you? My dear, take Elias Gallagher to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together in matrimony, to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward. I... I did... <gasps> Stop! What? And that's where we stop for this episode. Oh my gosh, that's... Oh, we're good. Save, save, save. Yes, save. Okay. So, next time on the next episode, Taylor is objecting to our wedding Shrek style. We're pulling a Shrek! Bye! Oh, can you imagine... Beautiful wedding present Fucking can't remember the words to the song What a beautiful wedding What a beautiful wedding said the bride's groom <laughs> I, I don't know how to convey how good this game is like I know I've been ripping on Taylor to shut the fuck up there's a big tittied thick hipped gentlemanly ghost who's like you want to get married and he like comes in and be like no that's a stupid idea you're in college you still wear my little pony sweatpants get out of there 
Oh. <gasps> no! No! 